Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. I bring good news today because my first book has just hit Amazon to pre-order. So I'm quite excited about that one. For new listeners, in a nutshell, last year I was approached by a publisher. After watching hundreds of TED Talks about innovation, they asked me to channel all those thoughts, insights and expertise from those TED Talks and put them into a sort of a guide to help businesses innovate. And so the book begins with that bright idea and takes you on a journey through culture change, how to innovate and how we're all creative and finishes with a few examples from the likes of Branson, Bezos and Vaynerchuk. So the book's called Great TED Talks, Innovation, an unofficial guide with words of wisdom from 100 TED speakers. And as a thank you to everyone listening that supported me while I was writing it and still supporting me now, if you leave a review of the podcast, send me a screenshot, I'll send you a free copy of the book when it comes out. And as always, my email address is techblogwriter at outlook.com. Now, people often say to me, Neil, after nearly 1,100 interviews with tech leaders, do any of them stick in your mind? Did they? Was there any memorable stories that stand out for you? Well, of course, there are a few. But one of them was the success of Datto founder Austin McCord way back on episode 46, which if you Google Austin McCord, his story reads like something of a digital fairy tale because he launched Datto at the age of 21 and he appeared in the 30 under 30 Forbes list. But here's the kicker. He bravely turned down a $100 million buyer offer from an unnamed security firm. Now, I will always remember him telling me that he kept that $100 million check and he put it in a frame. But I don't know if he was joking, but can you imagine being faced with a decision like that? Somebody knocking on your door saying, I'll give you $100 million for your business. What would you do? I'll be interested in your thoughts. As always, remember, email me techblogwriter at outlook.com or contact me on any social channel at Neil C. Hughes. Now, I believe that Austin McCord stepped down as CEO of Datto last year, but the computer data protection company he founded then grew into a $1 billion industry giant. Suddenly that $100 million feels like small change, doesn't it? But what a great story. Now, I'm not one to dwell on the past, though, and here in 2020, Datto recently announced the findings of its global state of the channel ransomware report. And in that report, it revealed that SMEs may be continuing to take that ransomware bait. But MSPs are now enabling two-factor authentication to double down on ransomware protection against their list of future ransomware attack targets, which are inevitably going to be IoT devices and social media accounts. Now, considering as I record this, the TravelX website is still down after a cyber attack on New Year's Eve, which obviously took the company offline and also brought ransomware back into the conversation for business. So those two points alone, I think it's a great opportunity to get the guys from Datto back onto the show, but also explore the topic of ransomware. So let me take your ears all the way back to the US so we can speak with Ryan Weeks, Chief Information Security Officer at Datto. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Ryan. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, this is Ryan Weeks. I'm the Chief Information Security Officer at Datto, which means uh, I am responsible for literally everything related to security, whether it's Datto's internal security programs, our product, third-party vendors, um, really anything having to do with information security falls on, on my plate. Now, we're racing towards over 1,100 interviews on this podcast, but I was way back on episode 46 I spoke with Austin McCord, the original founder of Datto. Uh, I think that was way back in 2016. But four years have passed and we have a much bigger audience now. So can you just remind the listeners of what problems you solve with technology at Datto? Absolutely, yeah. So Datto uh, builds and sells technology that is uh, used by small and medium-sized businesses, um, 
primarily through the IT service providers or managed service provider uh, or what we call the IT channel. So data builds and sells solutions like backup and disaster recovery, networking, SaaS uh, protection for like O365 and Google, um, and some you know various other products. And uh, our network of uh, IT service professionals provide those services to small and medium-sized businesses. So that's the, the bread and butter of what Datto is. And as we record this podcast today, the TravelX website is still down. Um, I think that, and that was New Year's Eve that it's been down since. It was taking the company offline and also bringing ransomware back into the conversation for businesses. But that is just one primary example. But can you expand on just how much of a threat you see ransomware is to businesses right now? Yeah, it's definitely interesting to, to, to have a conversation about the threat of ransomware because like this time last year, everyone was, um, or maybe like a year and a half or two two ago, everyone was like, oh, ransomware is dying, like crypto mining is the next biggest thing. And I think yeah. the thing that we all fail to realize is the the attackers, the cybercrime groups that facilitate these uh, these attacks are responding to market forces, right? They're in business. And so if cryptocurrencies spike in in price, they'll shift their tactic of the day to that, and then they'll come back to ransomware when those prices uh, are on the decline. And so we've actually seen this kind of this resurgence in ransomware after cryptocurrency prices dropped because it is uh, incredibly lucrative. And there's also been a pretty seismic shift in how ransomware is delivered to businesses. Um, and there's a lot more players entering the market. It's actually, uh, I don't know that we're at peak saturation, but there are, um, you know, I I think in the last month, there's been two or three additional ransomware families that have been introduced. So it's definitely a serious threat. And it's not one that I believe is going to go away anytime soon. In fact, my belief is that it's going to continue to grow and become more nefarious. And you guys also recently released the Global State of the Channel Ransomware Report, which revealed that SMEs might be continuing to take that ransomware bait even still. But I mean, can you expand on that for me? Yeah, so the the, the study surveys those managed service providers, which are our customers and, and sells our uh, solutions into the SMEs. We have found that the best barometer for what's happening with SMEs are the people that are responsible for their, their technology stack. And so we survey these, these uh, MSPs and ask them just generally about trends in ransomware and, and how it's affecting their SMEs. There's some pretty interesting results in, in the survey. You know, one which I think is super interesting is roughly half of all of our MSPs surveyed say that only one in five of their SMBs are talking to them about how the MSP can help them protect against ransomware. And I think that that's a really unfortunate kind of stat because it indicates that while MSPs appreciate and understand the threat, it hasn't really made its way down to SMEs. And educating your market, which is what the MSPs have to do, is is, is somewhat difficult, um, uh, especially on a topic like ransomware, which isn't very accessible to an SME depending on you know their, their level of, of technical prowess. Um, another interesting stat is 66 uh, or roughly two out of three SMBs state that they're concerned to some extent with ransomware to their MSP. Um, But MSPs believe that that should be 100%. So again, that's an interesting statistic if you take it in in light of the the first stat. So two out of three SMEs are concerned, but only one out of five of them actually talk to their MSP about ransomware. So it's definitely like a cognitive dissonance or a disconnect somewhere in there. Um, but certainly like for SMEs, ransomware is arguably one of the biggest threats outside of human error, uh, in, in terms of, um, you know, just, dis- dis- you know, business interruption, disruption, disaster recovery, um, that, you know, those are kind of the two most common, uh, events that we see. And again, ransomware is picking up steam, especially in the SME market. And those two small stats there speak volumes about the state of the landscape at the moment. But for business leaders that could be listening anywhere in the world, what is the real cost of ransomware for a business, would you say? It's really interesting, and it's actually it's evolving. Um, and I, I don't know that there's, you know, research is on like the whole, the whole spectrum of companies. For SMEs, though, what we find is that generally the cost of downtime can be 23 times larger 
than the ransomware uh, it, itself. Um, so you have to take into account things like loss of employee productivity. Um, you, you noted that the TravelX website is still down. They're, they're not doing business, right? So lost business. Um, if you have to pay the ransom, that goes out of your pocket too. Sometimes you're paying professionals to help you recover um, from those incidents. And so the costs actually quickly add up. Um, and we, we, you know, this is supported with a lot of evidence, um, you know, all throughout the world with different ransom attacks, especially your businesses don't pay the ransom. Oftentimes they find that the costs to recover when they don't pay the ransom are far in excess of the ransom itself. That doesn't mean I'm endorsing paying the ransom. I think you should have a good strategy so that you don't have to pay a ransom. Um, but I think like the preparedness to execute that plan is, is something that um, needs a little bit of work. And what really interested me in the findings there was that outsourcing IT services actually reduced the ransomware threat. I, can you expand on the reasons why? And did that surprise you at all? Uh, no, it doesn't surprise me. When, when we think about, or at least when I think about ransomware, there's kind of like two, two paths for ransomware, right? One is kind of opportunistic, whoever... You know, whoever I tend to infect, like, um, you know, that's great. And then there's an, another kind of emerging side to ransomware, which is targeted, you know, large scale targeted attacks uh, aimed to deliver ransomware. Most SMEs are still seeing the kind of opportunistic ransomware. And that ransomware, you know, when you're not specifically being targeted, generally relies on, like, gaps or weaknesses in your general IT hygiene. And so for SMEs that don't have an IT solution uh, or IT you know, services staff in-house or an MSP, they tend not to have the type of hygiene that is necessary for them to avoid these opportunistic ransomware attacks. Um, but we find generally that when you have an outsourced IT service provider, that service provider focuses on kind of basic configuration management, patch management, um, you know, just making sure that the standard access vectors such as email and web um, and vulnerabilities on end computing machines are addressed and that that significantly reduces an SME's exposure to that, that type of attack. And business continuity and disaster recovery solutions have all continued to prove to be the most effective in actually lessening the impact of ransomware attack. But do you have any tips around achieving that? Yeah, I think there's there's a bunch of things when it comes to you know backup and disaster recovery solutions. Um, you know, we're we're, we're that was in that business, so we we have a lot of ideas um, around it. But uh, I, I think number one is you you have to have a backup. And you have to make sure that that backup is uh, able to be relied on. So we call that integrity, right? That the integrity of that backup is, is such that you could actually recover the system from that. And you should also be making sure that that backup is um, kind of logically isolated from your main computing network, right? Because the last thing you want is a ransomware attack to spread within your environment and have that attack spread to the system that's storing your backups. Um, which unfortunately, um, you know, we hear horror stories on that all the time. So really having a solution that kind of takes a copy and almost puts it in escrow for you uh, is really important when you're thinking about how would you recover from a wide scale ransomware attack um, for sure. But uh, again, I think for an SME to try and figure out, uh, you know, the, all the nuances of threat models and how to prevent ransomware attacks and recover for them is somewhat inaccessible unless they have a lot of free time on their hands and are technically inclined. And that's another strategy that uh, an IT service provider will generally uh, present to the SME and, and handle for them. And so I think, you know, it's really a question of, do you want to figure out that whole landscape and all the things associated with it? Or would you hire a professional to help make sure that, you know, if you're having a bad day that you you have a good actionable plan for recovery so okay. the travel the travel x issue seemed to highlight how unprepared they were because they seem to be getting denial and put up a plan maintenance page on their website which could eventually put them in trouble with gdpr but if we put that to one side are you finding that businesses are starting to prepare and think it won't happen to them and adopt a more proactive than reactive approach yeah, it's a really layered question. What I'm seeing in the conversations I'm having with S uh, with MSPs is that the they they're still having trouble with the conversations with SMEs. SMEs still think it won't happen to them, 
which is very interesting because they're actually one of the most lucrative targets for attackers. And so there's definitely a, a kind of a uh, disconnect there. Um, I think that MSPs are doing a, a good job of helping their end customers prepare for those types of attacks. Um, and I think it's actually one of the key value propositions of an IT service provider for SMEs today. Again, going back to human error and ransomware being kind of the two biggest business uh, interruption um, types of events that they see. Um, but yeah, as you point out with TravelX, there, there are indications that they're potentially unprepared. Um, I, I say potentially because I don't really want to armchair quarterback their events. Um, but it is not... Uh, you know, not uncommon to see maybe if you haven't run through an exercise or that exercise hasn't fully encompassed the right people, your organization, that they might make a mistake, like put up a maintenance page um, without knowing what the appropriate step is for that type of, 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 of event. So I think there's still a lot of work to do on educating the SME, as well as making sure that there's a, a, not just a response plan, but that there's kind of a muscle built or an attitude towards how we would actually enact it. Um, I think there's still a lot of work that needs to be done um, across the board. Again, I think that work is not being done because there's this kind of, it won't happen to me mentality. Um, and we have to, we have to figure out how to break down that, that, um, that kind of logical fallacy. Absolutely. And outside the world of ransomware, I also know that Datto hosted the fifth European DattoCon in Paris late last year. And the, the event, for people that don't know, brought together over 750 managed service providers and industry leaders from over 20 countries. So what were the big takeaways from the event? And were there any themes that seemed to dominate conversations? Yeah, I think that the two big conversations in Paris were kind of the the, the rise of um, managed service providers in in Europe. The the IT service delivery model is slightly different in in Europe than it is in uh, other jurisdictions or geolocations, and so that's that's a big conversation. Is you know having conversations with these kind of existing IT solutions providers and how they are making the evolution towards like a, a managed service provider, which is really, you know, a, a much, a much larger uh, kind of concept. Um, so that's number one. Number two, I mean, most of the conversations I have are security related because that's my background. So I think on the security side, one of the big conversations was um, right now, just, you know, just looking at the news and also looking at like, you know, we're in a privileged position where, when an MSP's SME has a ransomware attack, a lot of times that, SM, that, that MSP comes back to Datto and we work directly with them to help that SME recover their environment. And so we get a bunch of like interesting metadata and what, what we've been seeing is most of that has actually been occurring in kind of North America, Canada, US uh, mostly with a sprinkling of, of Europe in there, but the, the conversation was really about like, why isn't it happening as, as why isn't it as prevalent in Europe and APAC uh, and uh, you know, Australia, New Zealand regions, and uh, you know, really a lot of conversations around that. And everyone's just kind of scratching their heads because there's really no logical reason. And then, you know, TravelX on, uh, you know, over the holidays um, kind of supports the the thesis that there really was and is no reason that those attacks should not be occurring in those regions as well. So I think kind of MSPs were at, you know, at, at Datacom Paris having the conversation about like, okay, we see what's going on in North America. What can we learn from what's happening in North America to make sure that we are prepared um, in Europe, uh, APAC and Australia uh, for these types of incidents, because there is no logical reason that those attacks are not occurring in this uh, jurisdiction as well. So there's definitely a lot of conversation around that point. Um, it, you know, I, I don't want to paint a picture that like ransomware is not a problem in Europe because it is a problem everywhere. It just seems that for right now, the attackers are heavily focused on North America. I don't see why they wouldn't at some point shift to other markets as well to expand their profitability. 
Absolutely. And of course, I think it was about two, three years ago, we had the WannaCry ransomware attack that crippled the entire um, medical industry over here in the UK. It's obvious it's going to happen again. And we've covered so much ground here and there's so many big talking points. So for people listening that want to continue that conversation after this podcast, what's the best way of finding you guys online and also contacting the Datto team if they're left with any questions? Uh, yes, certainly. So um, you can find us at our website, uh, www.datto.com, D-A-T-T-O.com. Um, there's a contact us section of the website, uh, which will give you access to a bunch of contacts. Our sales team is actually very, very educated on the ransomware threats that are occurring for SMEs and IT service providers. Um, and then they have access to a bunch of resources to help you continue the conversation and explore um, you know, what might make sense for your business. So that would be the best, best way to get a hold of us. Excellent. Well, like I said early on in the episode, ransomware is in the conversation for businesses of all sizes now. And that global state of channel ransomware report is incredibly revealing and so many big takeaways in that report. So a huge thank you for taking the time just to come on here and explain and talk through some of the findings in that report. Thanks again. Ron. It was my pleasure. And I, I appreciate the time from your listeners as well. The cost of ransomware, combined with the fact that outsourcing IT services reduces the ransomware threat, and also understanding the causes of successful ransomware attack and learning about the effective method to combat ransomware, for me, made today's conversation incredibly valuable. But I'm conscious we've got listeners all over the world listening to this podcast. What did we miss? Are you shouting at your phone now going, hey guys, why didn't you mention this? If that sounds like you right now, don't worry, I'm here to listen to you. So if, if it's that or you have a question or you want to come on the show or just say hello, whatever it is, just simply email me at techblogwriter at outlook.com and you can catch me on any social channel. Just look for Neil C. Hughes. Now, I also wanted to give you all a heads up. I am going to be attending Dyna Trace Perform in Las Vegas in a couple of weeks. So if any of you are going to that event and you'd like a hot cup of coffee or a cold beer with your friendly podcast host, let me know and we'll meet up and uh, have a drink because I genuinely mean it when I ask you to email me or DM me on social, or equally meet me in person. That's what this show is all about. Because I genuinely appreciate the fact that you tune into this podcast every single day. It's a big ask. Now, before I get all teary and make a fool of myself, I'm going to walk off into the sunset now. So I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. But thanks for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.